What's up and welcome to episode 264 of First Geek 411. This week we got Venom, Wizards of the Coast talking AI, and the PlayStation State of Play. 100% spaced on what the other one was, but we got there. There you go. <laughs> um, I'm your host, Cameron Franklin, and with me, as always, from West Coast, Best Coast, is Emma. How are you doing today? Hi. Doing good. Nice. I just thought of something else to add to my list of weekly things. Ooh, nice. Um, we'll get to that list of weekly things in one moment. But first, you can find us on our social media as OneGeek411. Join our Discord server. Shoot us an email at 1stgeek411 at gmail.com. Watch live on Twitch Monday nights at 6.45 Mountain Time-ish. Um, and find the videos over on our YouTube where you can like, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and then you can also find us on the Redbubble store for that merch. Let's get into what we have been up to. Emma, what are your things from this week? My things? Let's see. We had book club on Thursday. That was a lot of fun. Talked about comics. Uh, and it was a good time. Uh, go check that out. Um, I've been recently working on the Platinum for Horizon Forbidden West. Because, Probably. of course, I am. Um, and I did the math, and I have logged over 270 hours between the two Horizon games. Yes, let's go, Emma. Um, let's go. <laughs> which says everything you need to know. Um, I mean, I, I do know you as the prominent Horizon hater. I believe oh, you yeah, are I on hate it. record. It's the worst. Yeah, that, it is um, the worst game in the Aloy world. That is your least favorite character. <laughs> least favorite character on the planet. Um, so that, the like, the one game, actually there's two games that follow that for hours. Baldur's Gate 3, which tracks just in general for how big that game is, and Subnautica. Um, Subnautica is a second in terms of general like how many save files I've put into that game. Um, and then it would be Baldur's Gate 3. Um, but yeah, uh, so been working on that. I finished weeding the backyard, which means that I got to go to a plant nursery on Friday and spend Ooh, nice. too much money getting <laughs> plants to then put in the backyard, which I did, which then spurred my roommate to start looking at things to put in the backyard. Which is great. So now we're turning our um, dirt patch into an actual like place to hang out and be nice. So yeah, love that. Uh, we need yeah. to do that to our dirt patch as well. Yeah, it's it's nice when even you just add in like two or three things and it starts to look infinitely better. Um, and then Saturday night. I went out and got drinks with a bunch of friends for the first day of Pride nice. because. Uh, it's the first day of Pride, and you get to celebrate your friends who are cool and <laughs> underappreciated, unfortunately, in lots of areas of society. So <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And then the thing that came in the mail that I'm very excited about is my Ooh. dice bag of holding from Critical Role. Um, and it's very big. And it now has lots of dice in it because I also then ordered a bunch of dice. <laughs> To put I was in about it. To say, having something like that's like a challenge. Like once you have that, you can't just have like one set of die like dice. I literally for have health. one section for every color of the rainbow. So I have all the colors of the rainbow. And it's great. And it's like there's one set that's a fun sparkly green set. And then there's fun purple and pink ones. And yeah, I'm excited because now I have lots of dice and a place to put them all in this massive thing, which was a lot bigger than I expected it to be. That's awesome. But, you know, that just means that there's literally so much space for me to um, put dice in, because I know I'm going to be getting more dice in the future. Um, and, yeah, like, see, like, even, even this set, I did one of those, like, mystery, like, you know, three scoops of dice or oh, whatever yeah, yeah. things from it off the internet. Anything. So it could be anything. Um, so, like, a bunch of yellow dice. Which is also fun now because then, like, 
for characters that I play, I'm that kind of person who like gets like two sets of dice that are their official mm -hmm. dice, but then I'll supplement them with other like more basic sets of dice that are on color theme, if you will, mm -hmm. um, and have those supplement for when things get put in dice jail. So, yeah. Nice. I um going off on math rocks. Um, I have been wanting to get some Ezek dice for Pathfinder, and I don't know what it is about Ezek, but I feel like he's the first character that I've played that I just do not understand what his color combo is. Yeah, like just like visually, like like all of my other characters, I feel like have had like a very like distinguished. It they are this. Now, granted, yep. a lot of the characters I tend to play have something to do with fire, so like maybe that's a bit of a cop out. But like, yep, yep, uh, yep. Ezek is just like really hard to get like dies that kind of match what I think of him as. But uh, that's on yep. my list because I have been itching for some new dice, yeah. and so that um, was me with my Sephira character for a while, and then someone sent me a set of dice like a link to a set of dice that were really pretty and had like almost a celtic rune vibe to it mm -hmm. that i ended up getting that are like blue gemstone so that when they came and i finally saw them i was like okay her color theme is blue for dice that is the vibe but it took a while to get there mm -hmm. so yeah. uh, in chat chunk says you're just a regular old dice goblin uh, yeah, and, I am. Um, and I feel like this is also the um, Parks and Rec on, this is a deep cut, short, long walk for a short drink of water. Um, there's an episode of Parks and Rec where Leslie, or where Anne tells Leslie that Anne doesn't even like Harry Potter. And Leslie says, of course you do. You've seen all seven movies or all eight movies because Leslie forced her to watch them. And I feel like there's this fun, like chicken and the egg thing with the giant bag of dice. Of like, yes. are you a dice goblin because you have a giant bag to put your dice in? Or do you get the giant bag to put all of the dice that you've dice goblined? Like, yes. like which comes first? I I call myself a good old fashioned Laura Bailey when it comes to dice. Because yep. literally it is in my habit to like, when I see a pretty set of dice that someone has, ask them mm -hmm. if I can like hold them and look at them. Like, I ask for permission before I touch people's dice because anyone with bad juju are not allowed yeah. to touch my dice. <laughs> also, just a good rule of thumb. Ask permission before touching other people's property. Exactly. That's like a, that's like a big thing in Magic <laughs> the Gathering of like, yes, if you're playing, they have to sh tell you what the cards do, but you should still ask and not just grab it. Like that kind yep. of thing. Yep. Manners. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. For me, speaking of Magic the Gathering, um, one of my really good friends was in town, and so we played a couple games of Magic. I was place testing one of my new commander decks um, built around Starscream. Um, it is not over here. Otherwise, I would grab it. I think I put it away like a responsible person for once. And so play tested that. It was a lot of fun. Um, did not win the games, but had a lot of fun and learned a lot about the deck. And that's what matters. And so I already got some ideas for changes and stuff like that. So that was a lot of fun. Um, I have also been doing a lot of reading. We talked about this, I guess, like pre-book club on Thursday. But so far in the year, I have completed 24 books. Nice. Um, I also really like that. This is all according to my story graph where people can follow me um, as Humar Whittle. Um, I've only me read here as well. Yeah, I've only read 3,000 pages, but I have listened to 130 hours of books. And so you can definitely tell that I'm an audiobook person, not a written book person. Um, and so um, with that, I finished Bridge of Souls, which is um, another one of V.E. Schwab's works. I am working on my 100% completion of V.E. Schwab's novels. And so we're slow and steady, like working our way there. Um, I think I only have two more series that I need to read. Um, nice. But I need to go verify. And then she has some like 
more kid focused books, like not even like middle grade, but like actual like like single digit age kids stuff, which I probably mm-hmm. will not actually read those, but like uh, who knows? Maybe the audiobooks will only be an hour, and so I'll knock them out because it's an easy thing to knock out on the way to work one day. Nothing so, wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, and so we'll see. Um, I'm excited. I'm working through. I've, I constantly will praise V.E. Schwab. Um, I love her works. Um, my family has now no, now knows that I love Schwab to the point that like my sister-in-law recommended a book to me because she was like, I know you like The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And yep. she was like, I read this other book and it reminded me of it and it made me think of you. So I am proud of that. Shanine, you can take credit for that as after like convincing me to read Invisible Life and then it became one of my favorite books. Yeah. So um, let's see. Also this week, I, I'll i say randomly, we had Deadpool 3 trailers and stuff come out, but uh, kind of decided to just go back and watch Deadpool 1 and 2. As and you should. So, <laughs> It's been it's been a minute since I've seen them both, and so they're such good films. Like a plus, I cannot wait for Deadpool three. Uh, I've said before, Deadpool three and Dune Part two were like my two most anticipated movies of this year, mm-hmm. and so I am so hyped for um, for Deadpool three, and so and then. Um, I also got to play. I guess this was. Technically two weeks ago, but since we decided to take Memorial Day off to rest, um, I also played Candela Obscura. And so, nice. and this has had also getting to the math rock problem. The problem that I've had lately is like the two tabletop RPGs that I'm most interested in right now, both are D6 systems. And like, and they used air quotes different dice uh, in the sense of like, it's like, here's my Candela dice. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the candela dice the fancy symbol is on the six but the other one is the marvel multiverse rpg where the fancy thing is on the one of one of the dice <laughs> and so it's like if we're gonna do anything special we have to get like really specific with what kind of dice we're buying <laughs> and so yep yep um and then um, yeah, so Candela was a lot of fun. Uh, we actually had like combat, which was our, our first time um, for two out of the three of us that were there. It was our first time having combat. We uh, solved the mystery and nice. we uh, had some shenanigans ensue. As one does. I am, yeah, as one does. I am loving my character still. His name is Hugo. I've talked about them in, of him before, but like he's inspired by Paul Rudd from Parks and Rec. He's Which like is fabulous. Yeah, he's Everything like this about lo- that is great. Yeah, he's this lovable oaf, and um, I'm trying to balance when I'm allowing him to be serious versus when, like, um, like when I need him to be competent. Maybe that's another way to say it. Versus when like he is just this complete goof that does not understand what's going on, and yep. so because like yeah, it's a hard balance because I don't want him to be useless because like playing a character that's actually useless is no fun both for me and for the group. Cause then I'm like an extra body, but like finding like when to flip the switch for him um, and have him like actually get it has definitely been a challenge. Mm-hmm. And so fun challenge. I'm airing on the side of comedy. And so there you go. Yeah. And then, um, but yes, that's going well. I'm looking forward to playing more, solving more mysteries, doing more things. And then World of Video Games, I got the Platinum for Animal Well. Again, technically nice. it was last week, but we didn't t- hadn't chatted yet. Crazy cool game. Um, way too smart for me. Like, once I beat it, I've watched, like, a lot of the secrets and stuff like that that people have, like, compiled on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And there's some stuff there that, like, I think you could give me, like, a hundred years, and I don't know if I would have figured out. <laughs> like there's some stuff like now granted like and some of them are even like audio puzzles which i'm even worse at but like there's a lot of stuff that's like if you look at this and then draw these out and then do this thing and then flip the map upside down and do a kickflip 
um, and all of these things. Then it gives you this one route that you have to do and have to do these 30 steps that then gets you to this other thing, which is an Easter egg. And it's just like, I would never have remotely figured anything of these out. Shout out to like the extremely smart people that have figured those out. Um, but yeah, like these are all like way over my head, a plus game, uh, but way too smart for me. And then, um, in the world of easier games, I have also started playing Dave, the diver, um, uh, which is a fishing slash sushi simulator. I go for lack of a better term. Um, I think there's supposed to be some like supernatural stuff that happens as well, but like the idea is like during the day you go fishing and you like find artifacts and stuff like that. And then in the evening you sell, su- like run a sushi bar. Yep. And so uh, I'm really enjoying that. I'm only a couple hours in. That was my most recent stream on Cameron plus Deanna. Uh, and then I also have started playing Marvel, um, Marvel's Midnight Suns because it came to PlayStation plus. And so after playing a ton of it on PC, um, I have switched over and I'm now doing like a second playthrough on PS5. I'm going to actually try to finish it this time because I kind of got burnt out. But we'll see how far I get before um, Elden Ring DLC comes out. But um, I'm going a lot faster because I get to skip all of these early cutscenes. So that's great. Nice. Um, and so, um, and then, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Awesome game. I've, I've said multiple times before, I'm like the literal target audience for this game. And so of a strategy Marvel game. Yep. I'm that in. makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I get to be friends with all the Marvel characters. Like, let's go. I want to be best friends with Captain Marvel and Blade and um, Magic and Spider-Man. Like, these are my people. <laughs> like, yep. And so... Um, but yeah, so let us know what you've been up to. If you're over in the Twitch chat, we can chat about it at the post show, or if you're over on YouTube, leave it down in the comment section. Um, for this week, um, we got three topics to chat about. We're going to start with the one that I believe we are both the most hyped about. Um, and that is the PlayStation state of play. Um, um, I'll do some shameless self-promotion, as I always do. I did a live reaction to this over on Cameron Plus Deanna, so if you want to watch me react to all these announcements as they're happening, you can find that over there. Um, But at the State of Play, we had a 30-minute presentation in which we got given uh, information on 14 games coming to PlayStation. Um, We were talking pre-show. One of the things that I'm excited about <laughs> is that you looked at this list and you're like, ooh, they're doing these things. For the, the things I games, commented on yeah, the were considerably games, different. Yeah, I'm the least excited for the two games that you mentioned, and I love that <laughs> about this podcast. So um, real quick, um, I'm going to do a run through of the 14 games, and then let's circle back. Um, Emma, I want to hear about the ones you're excited about. We'll share the ones I'm excited about. We'll kind of chat through. So we saw Astrobot, Concord, God of War, Ragnarok coming to PC, the Until Dawn remake, Skydance's Behemoth, Path to Exile 2, Monster Hunter Wild, Silent Hill 2, Aliens Rogue Incursion, Marvel Rivals, Dynasty Warrior or, Warriors Origins, um, Ballad of Antara, Infinity Nikki, and Where Winds Meet. Those were our 14 games, so... And but what of those are you most looking forward to? So the three that cut my eye off the top. There is a theme. <laughs> Until Dawn remake. Uh, Silent Hill 2. And Alien Rogue Incursion. All horror games. And I was like, yes. <laughs> Give them to me. I need them. I would like them, please, and thank you. Um... Super look good, looking forward to those um, because I haven't had the chance to play any of them, but they're ones uh, Until Dawn and um, Silent Hill 2 have been on my list to play. And then Alien, I just... Alien's a fun, cheesy franchise. I love it. Um, but some of these others... Uh, Ballad of Antara looks super fun um, and is one that I would absolutely get and want to play eventually. 
Um, yeah. I'll say Ballad of Antara as well as Where Winds Meet uh, mm-hmm. were both ones that like, I don't know if I would have recognized going into this, but both of those look super cool. They're like action. Yeah. They look like actiony RPGs, like maybe Soulsborne. Uh, in fact, I think one of them is a Soulsborne, but I don't think the other one is. Yeah. Um, and so those both looked really cool. Yeah. And those are, that was the other one I was going to mention was Where Winds Meet um, are the two that I haven't heard of before, but are like, look super cool. And I can definitely see myself playing eventually. <laughs> um, for me, um, to the surprise of literally no one, um, Marvel Rivals, I was hyped about. Um, I believe we already knew it was coming to PlayStation eventually, um, but I was really excited um, that we got that kind of officially, officially confirmed, as well as found out that the closed beta will be on PS5 as well as Xbox and PC. So that's really exciting. Um, Instead of the closed alpha, that was just on PC. We also learned that Adam Warlock and Venom are coming to the game as playable characters. And so that's really cool as well. I'm always excited to see them fill out more of that roster. Um, And especially to get like what I would consider a super obvious character like Venom, but then a more niche character like Adam Warlock, where like... Mm -hmm. Well, like Adam has been in like the Guardians of the Galaxy video game and is in the MCU now with Guardians 3 uh, uh, is definitely not as like well known of a character. Um, I'm really happy to to see what uh, or to see that character get love and kind of for us to if they're going to release characters in that way. I really like the idea of them releasing like one more popular character and one more niche character. Um, And then. I was also v- literally super hyped. And this is the most hyped I was for this whole thing was for, as we see in our, our image, Astrobot official announcement, yeah. full game coming. Um, I don't know if this had leaked. Uh, there was apparently a big leak like day of the announcement, but like, I don't know if this had leaked before that because a lot of people were talking about um, Astrobot and, uh, I was really excited that all of those conversations ended up being real in the sense that we actually Mm -hmm. got the game and it's going to be a full game. We currently do not know the price point. Um, We're supposed to, uh, it goes up for pre-order this week at summer game fest, like the day of summer game fest. So some people are taking that to mean that we could be getting another announcement. Um, But for people that have a PS five, we had Astro's playroom and then yeah. this is going to kind of further that 3D platformer into yeah. a, its whole big game. So, Yeah, and that was a fun way to introduce people to the <laughs> PS5 was through a free, like, mini thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and it was... I think it was also a super fun way of introducing people to some of the characters. So, like, as we yeah. have up on the image, um, we have... Kratos Astrobot. Um, we also saw Aloy Astrobot in the trailer yep. and stuff like that. And so I'm really excited that the game is going to kind of still be taking that PlayStation like icon route. Like at, yeah. at one point in the trailer, there's a literal PS5 spaceship. Like yep. I'm yep. so in. I love all of that. And I think that that's a really cool direction. Um, Kind of similar e to Little Big Planet and what they did with that, where Sackboy could dress up as all the various characters. Um, mm-hmm. But I really like that, and I like that we're going to get to see these characters, presumably this time, actually interact with Astro. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I'm excited for all of those. There's so many cool references and things like that. And so um, in chat... Um, uh, Chunk says Concord, Marvel, Marvel Rivals, um, Monster Hunter Wilds, and of course Astrobot. Um, Concord looks interesting. I was not a fan of it being a third of the state of play. <laughs> like we got like a eight minute like character trailer, and then like a couple minutes of gameplay, and I think like the first eleven minutes of the thirty minute presentation was Concord. Which is a new, like, 
first person character like hero shooter think overwatch Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and so oh that's this game yeah and so was not like the trailer looked super cool but then at the end they're they're like it's a pvp thing and i was like oh man i was so hopeful this looks so cool and they're like like, it's just an overwatch format game and i was like oh yeah i will Um, not be participating then (laughs) yeah unfortunately that's how i feel too like the characters they very much seemed like they were going for the goofy like guardians of the galaxy vibe yeah yeah but then that's not what the gameplay is going to be they did say that they are going to be doing weekly story which i think is really interesting but um, as i've seen other people point out like the problem is the story people aren't going to be interested in a pvp shooter Nope. And PvP shooter fans also typically are not interested in story. So nope. this is, it feels like this is not catering to the right audience. But it's not. hey, maybe it'll do really well. What do I know? Um, and so I'm up for at least trying it, assuming it's a free-to-play game or is included with PlayStation Plus. Uh, this is probably not a game that I will spend money on, especially considering later in that we got Marvel Rivals, which is free to play. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's definitely one where like, had they stick into sticking stuck to just like being story driven, like the trailer suggested, or reformatted their trailer to play to the PvP side. Like, yeah. if it had been story driven, I would have absolutely spent money on it. Mm-hmm. But it's not. Yeah. So I'm not gonna get it because that's not my type of game. But yep. I'm curious to see how well this ends up being received in the first mm-hmm. like two weeks, month, couple of months, because of it's gotten that comment I've seen yeah. all over the internet of just like, you know the disappointment and how it was pitched versus what it end, ended up being. Mm-hmm. Yep. And chat so, says, if enough of my friends are going to try it, I'll try it. That's kind of where I'm at too. Like if people want to play, like we've talked on here about having like multiplayer games that we can kind of use as standby for weeks where it's like, mm-hmm. Hey, there's not a lot that we want to discuss this week. Let's jump on X game and play. Um, it would yeah. be cool for that to be a Concord or a Marvel Rivals. Um, but like, um, it has to be worth playing and there has to be people that want to play it. That's kind of the challenge there. And yeah, it looks beautiful. Like I love their character design. Um, and like, again, kind of, I hate to beat the dead horse of Overwatch, but like, and keep using that as the example. But like, one of the things that I had been really excited about for Overwatch 2 is that they had talked about actually doing PVE. And there's actually going to be like missions and story. And then it turned out all of that was a lie. Um, uh. And they literally knew they were not going to be able to deliver that as they were telling fans that that was coming. Cause like, yeah. I think the overwatch characters are super interesting, but yeah. I don't, I'm like the gameplay of it. I would much rather play third person shooters than first person shooters. And having not yeah. known the characters, I'm not necessarily interested in getting to know them. Um, I don't have that foundation again using Marvel rivals as the example where, Oh, I can play as Magneto. Cool. I know what that's yeah. going to play. Like I can un- yeah. kind of understand that just by virtue of liking Magneto. Yeah. And so, cause it, it pulls from outside material mm-hmm. that a lot of people can access in other ways. Yep. Egg. Exactly. Um, Let's see. Oh, last thing I want to call out. We skipped over this. There's another game called Infinity Nikki, which is an open world dress up adventure game. Um, And apparently this is like a huge franchise in like the mobile game sphere. This is not something I have remotely heard of. I don't know if the Internet <laughs> needs this game, Um, but uh, apparently like this is like a super huge franchise that this is like the fourth game. And it's like the first one coming to console. So like for the people that are into that game, cool. I'm glad that y'all are going to get like a non-mobile game. 
Um, Excited for you. (laughs) Yeah. For the rest of us, this just seemed like a super weird announcement for a game that like doesn't necessarily know what it's going to be. Um, Someone, I want to say it was sneaky, made the joke in my chat that like it looked like they had just put all the genres into a blender and this is the game that came (laughs) out. And so, um, but I'm excited for people that are like interested in this franchise to be getting a console game. So um, um, with that, let us know what you are excited about from the state of play. We do have, um, I mentioned this as well, Summer Game Fest coming this week, I believe on Friday. So we're going to get, I believe it's going to be like a two hour show. So we should be getting some new announcements there. And then as we get into the summer vibes, we should also be getting a ton of other announcements coming. I believe we know of an Xbox and Nintendo thing coming soon, as well as I know Chunk asked about an Ubisoft thing in um, Discord. And so hopefully we should be getting some pretty cool announcements and things coming up. So um, but yeah, that brings us through State of Play. Let's get to our next topic. Um Hey, Emma. Hey, Cameron. Um, You know how Wizards of the Coast said that they don't want to use AI in their games? I do. I remember that. Yeah. And then do you remember? Yeah. Do you remember how on Twitter (laughs) they posted a picture that was clearly made by AI? And And then they got called out for it? Yeah. And then they said, whoa, it definitely doesn't have AI, everyone. How You're crazy to think that. How dare you accuse us? Look at our statement about not using yeah, AI. Absolutely not gaslighting at all. Yeah. And then you know how it ended up that the service that they used to create that asset did use AI and wizards just didn't pay attention and didn't ask? I do well, remember that. <laughs> what if I told you that Wizards of the Coast has opened an AI-related job um, that they are hiring for called the principal AI engineer. Um, mm, the job curious. Post, yeah. It asks for a, for someone with proven experience in AI ML systems in at least one of the following areas, simulation, asset creation, and generative content. Um, and then this is also somebody that would be responsible for designing, building, and deploying systems for intelligent, Generation of text, dialogue, audio, art assets, NPC behavior, and real-time bot framework. How does that make you feel, Emma? I hate it. (laughs) What if I then told you that when Wizards had said that they didn't want to use AI, they meant specifically only in Dungeons & Dragons, which they previously got called out for using AI art in, and... Wizard and uh, Magic the Gathering, which see the previous discussion of um, of the post that they made. They never said they weren't interested in using AI art in things like video games that they are starting. Mm. And that makes it perfectly fine, right? Hmm. Makes me think of um, recent video game companies that have departed from popular um content related video game franchises that they will no longer be working on that um wizards of the coast may have their fingers in yeah um, <laughs> referencing baldur's gate 3 yeah this, this this sure seems like um larian sure did do a whole lot with baldur's gate over multiple years and we don't think that we're willing to dedicate that time to hire people but to we write see it all as of a those big things. chance to earn money <laughs> yeah um so uh, kind of ceasing the tongue in cheek side of this like this is it like wizards we just need a win right yeah like i i say this magic is one of my biggest fandoms i was literally playing magic earlier today like wizards give us a win and like it just feels like this is the most like legalese of like well actually we never said that we weren't going to do this um And it's just like, come on. Like, did we know this was going to happen at some point? Yes. But, like, uh, I feel like it's just, like, the gaslighting of them being, like, this has not changed our stance. We're going to just not care about artistic integrity in these other things. 
But the, the two things that we told you we cared about artistic integrity, those are the ones that we'll never use AI on. Um, and like, I don't know, like this is just like super discouraging to me of like whatever this is, like odds are just based on the, like the record, I would have been excited for this game. But like, man, I just feel so reluctant now that it's like, even if yeah. it ends up yeah. that the game doesn't use a ton of AI, like they're still using it. Yeah. <laughs> And like, well, I can see the desire for smaller studios to use AI as a way of like helping them with procedures. Um, while we never found out conf like definitively either way on Pal World as an example, um, mm -hmm. like I believe because they have used AI as like in parts of their other games, although my understanding of those other games is also that they're tongue in cheek making fun of AI, but yeah, whatever. Uh, that's not here or there, uh, but there were rumors of them using AI in power world. Um, they're also a studio of like 13 people. Yeah. And like, like when we're talking like scalability into triple a, like these are things that like, it starts to sound a lot worse. And like, you literally just don't want to pay people to do this. Well, um, see the SAG AFTRA stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's literally what I spent a good chunk of last summer doing was, um, yeah. you know, hanging out with people out in the sun and walking around studios. Because no. uh, EA strikes. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. AI. And, we hate yeah. it. Long term. Big picture. Consumerism. Right. And I mean, I'm a big fan of the joke of like, I was told AI would help me know what I could cook with the food in my fridge. Not that AI would take the jobs of all of the yeah. artists and, yeah. um, and things like that. One um, of the things I've seen circulating recently is it basically says, I wanted AI to do my dishes for me so that I could make art. I didn't mm -hmm. want AI to make art so that I would do my dishes. Yeah. Like, basically, the core use of it can be applied to really useful things in our life, like doing the dishes or and, like, household chores that are, like, or other things that people may have difficulty doing in their day-to-day -day life. But instead, it's getting used for the things mm -hmm. that make us human. <laughs> yeah. I've used the example before. Uh, I might have said this on the podcast. I know I've said this to like former coworkers of like, I can see AI becoming kind of like Excel. That like, if you're running a business, the question isn't, do you use AI? But like, what do you use it to do? Yeah. Um, just like to the same extent of like, no modern business doesn't use Excel. Yeah. Like, and then it's kind of like, I use it for VLOOKUPs and pivot tables, but like people mm -hmm. in accounting use it for completely different things. But like when AI is like, cool, we're going to just lay off all of the creative positions. Like, or like, I don't know if this is worse. You're more plugged in with the move, the obviously the film side of things. Mm -hmm. But like, I feel like if I was a writer and I got handed a script that was like, this was generated by AI, make it readable. Like 99% of writers would quit right then and there. Like, yeah, that's just gotta be like so discouraging of like my skill set is writing and you're just having me be like the editor to an yeah. AI generated script. Yeah. Like the, the proofreader for a yeah, computer. Basically of like, yeah. This AI that just put mumbo jumbo together on yeah. the page. Like Yeah. No, like literally ninety nine percent of the writers I know would quit on the spot right then and there. Yeah. Um so yeah. I mean for this, like I mean obviously we're gonna have to wait and see what this actually means. Um but yeah, like Again, it just makes it so I have this rule in video games that is like if the game is voice acted and there are things you want me to read, 
I don't need to read them. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. if you spent the money to voice act parts of the game and this wasn't wor- this wasn't worth it for you to spend the money on, it's not worth it for me to read. Yep. Um, now, of course, there's shades of gray with that. Uh, but yeah. like, um, shout out. I mean, I don't necessarily do it, but like shout out to like the Soulsborne item descriptions that give you like important yeah. plot beats. Like those are clearly yeah. intended for you to be read. But Elden Ring yeah. and stuff like that also aren't typically voice acted to the same extent. Yeah. Talking more I'm, along I'm the lines in the same of like boat. Mass Effect. Yeah. Yeah. Or if they have like dialogue that yes. isn't voice acted. But then there's other dialogue that is, and it's like, okay, I'm not going to read the stuff that you don't give me a voice yeah. for, because what's yeah, the point? Yeah, you clearly didn't think it was worth the investment. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's kind of how I feel about this. It's like, oh, you're going to tell me that, like, oh, they're just doing NPC dialogue. It's like, okay, cool. NPC dialogue doesn't matter. Like, that's what you're telling me, because it wasn't worth it to have someone write it to be meaningful. Yeah. And, like... Is it going to be meaningful that this NPC tells me that the shop is down the street? Probably not. But I would at least like to know that that was intentionally put there to help guide me or guide people that are new to video games to yeah. something helpful. Like, yep. yep. I just want it to like, I just want it to matter for lack of a better term. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, of like it's like a, I feel like another like classic as you're playing Horizon, I say that again as you are always yeah. playing Horizon, but as you're constantly, playing, right. I'm never not given the 270 hours right. I've logged. <laughs> right, it's kind of the idea that's like, well, when I go to a town, I'm not going to interact with every NPC, like, and many of those NPCs don't have dialogue; they're just in the world to provide ambiance and vibe in yep. the world building but like if the, if you're gonna just have literally random things there versus things that are at least like somewhat designed and intentionally put there like again you're just like you're just showing that these things or that you view these things as not mattering yeah um and like again you brought us to Baldur's gate and it sure seems interesting that this position went up not too long after Larian said they would not be doing hey, Baldur's Gate I'm 4. Just, I'm just pointing <laughs> out strange coincidences, yeah. you know. Like, we cannot We've got a game deny. of the year that, like, is so talked about still so many months after it yeah. came out. And a studio that has announced that it will not be doing anything else yeah. with the game. Because it disagrees with the IP owner's business practices. And then we see that IP owner Most doing the, yeah. those questionable things. Right. Um, yeah. Good guy, Larian. <laughs> As Good it guy seems Larian. to be the thing that we've said for the past, like, eight months, but, like, ten months, however long it's been since Baldur's Gate 3. Um, yeah. Like, again, I just, I just don't understand. Um, and then, again, bringing it back to, like, the core issue – how are y'all still like well actually that's not what we said like it, yeah it amazes me that they're still pulling the um the literal um actually card yeah and yeah. thinking that they can get away with it and or that we don't see through it <laughs> yeah um um, so this new story obviously is a downer. Um, we'll see kind of what this actually like pans out to be once we find out like literally any information about this game. I really hope that whenever we have announcements and press for this game, press will actually ask what was the role of this AI person? Yeah. Like, I really hope that we get people that like, even if it means they lose their press creden- credentials, but like, um, or lose access to codes or whatever. Like, I really hope we actually get people say, like, what did this person do? And why don't you care about artists? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but it'll probably be multiple years before we actually get to anywhere. By yeah. which point, people will have forgotten, yeah. likely, which is un- unfortunate. And I think Wizards of the Coast is kind of relying on that. I think they were relying on this post not getting called out to begin yeah. with, um, because that seems like 
you know, a thing that I would do, they would post it and go, oh, no one's going to see this except for the people who apply. Right. But no. <laughs> yeah. It turns so now out... they're probably in a state of, well, let's just hope people forget. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. still hire someone for the role. <laughs> yeah. And then they'll hire a team and then they'll, I don't know, lay off all of the artists. Like, uh, yep. And then the game, the game might not do well because no one's going to care. And then <laughs> they'll just say, see, look, we can't afford to pay artists. So, but blah. Okay. Um, so that was this very downer of a news story. Um, we have another one that I am kind of, I'm excited about. Um, and I was talking to Emma about this before the show. I'm excited that this exists. <laughs> um, and that is that today we got a Venom 3 teaser trailer um, as the latest movie in the not Spider-Man Sony-verse. Um, and this is for Venom The Last Dance, uh, which is apparently going to be the third and final Venom, Venom movie. Uh <laughs> And so in this, we got to see more antics from Eddie and Venom as they are out doing um, their, I don't know, Venoming. Um, I really want them to say it's Venom time in this movie. Um, and just to like make it a perfect meme. Um, I was watching Screen Crush screen crushes video on this and one of the things that they called out is like the sony verse has kind of become the meme verse yeah where like being fans of them is making fun of them yep. of like it's morbid time or like my mom got killed in the amazon where she was studying spiders or whatever that line is that like wasn't even in the movie um but um, I did want to ask for this. Have you seen the other Venom movies? And if so, what is your thoughts? What are no, your thoughts? I have not because I've heard that they're bad. <laughs> and also just like at this point, anything that's remotely related to Marvel that is Sony. Mm -hmm. I just haven't outside of the Spider-Man movies. I just haven't watched because they haven't really been very good or had a good success rate in general <laughs> what do you mean if you take away the main part of these it's not as interesting <laughs> like... just like not being well made <laughs> yeah um so i have seen the first two venom movies i have not seen morbius and i have not seen madam web um when shanine and travis were visiting i really wanted us to watch madam web together yeah but I also was not willing to pay for us to watch Madam yeah. Web together. Yeah. <laughs> Madam so... is Madam Web is the only one I would watch, but just to see from myself how truly yeah, bad the, it is. The train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I will say, I actually think Venom One is like a good movie. Like, is it great? Definitely not. But like, I actually like it's a solid like popcorn flick of like yeah put it on laugh have friends over with you and watch it like that kind yeah. of thing um i i think that one is like you can see from that one how they would get the idea to double down on this if yeah. that makes sense of yeah. like it has enough cool things that like it's misses are like oh cool but we could fix that and then they just don't um but um, I don't know. I'm excited for yeah. this in the sense of, man, I want to see what happens. Yeah. I mean, Venom itself, like the, just the concept of it and just the comic book, mm -hmm. whatever is super cool as a, like a superhero, anti-hero, whatever. Like mm -hmm. it's such a unique, you know, Marvel character. Um, that's, you know, a lot of, you know, comic companies have, you know, and characters can fly, can shoot lasers out of their eyes, can, you know, 
control water or whatever. But then you've got this guy who over here who literally has like a weird gelatinous alien yeah. goop in his brain that talks to him and turns him into this even bigger gelatinous goop thing. And he's there to fight Spider-Man, but not really... Because they can't say Spider-Man. Because they can't fight Spider-Man. But also, like, in the comics, sometimes you fight Spider-Man and sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes they team up. Like, yeah. that's super cool because it's different. But mm -hmm. then it's like the movie's like, great. Person's great. From what I've heard just now. But... Yeah. Like, I've heard the reviews and stuff just... It's not going as good, so it's like, well, I'm not going to spend my money on it. Yeah, yeah, and like if it's not good, <laughs> that's kind of the caveat that I would even make there with Venom One. Of like, I would not pay to watch it. Like, if you have access to it via a streaming service, I would recommend taking the couple hours to go and watch it. Like, it's a fun watch, but like, it's not something I would recommend you spend five dollars on. <laughs> like, uh, and like, I mean, I. <laughs> as I have my Spider-Man 2 PS5 behind me, that was all about Venom. Um, like, Venom is such a cool character, and I kind of feel like Venom, along with Phoenix from the X-Men, have kind of been shafted um, yeah. in the sense of, like, they haven't, neither of them have ever had their time to shine well. So, like, like I said for a while, like, the problem with Phoenix is that we always go to Dark Phoenix, and we never get good yeah. Phoenix. Yeah. Like we never get to see that side of the character. And then because we never get that build up, like it just, it's it just doesn't matter. And so, people then don't care. Cause it's just like, well, yeah. Uh, and so like we had Spider-Man three venom, which like, again, like, well, I don't necessarily think that was the problem with Spider-Man three. Like it was very much like not given their time to shine amongst the eight other villains in that movie. Um, is it like like X Men Deadpool? Um, right. X Men Origins Wolverine is that the one you? What you mean? I'm thinking of Where Deadpool's of, the villain. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's what is Ryan? What is, like the whole reason Ryan Reynolds yeah. made the Deadpool movies happen? Yes. Um, it's not like as bad as that, um, but like. It's definitely the, like, y'all didn't get it. Um, and then, like, because it's, like, Venom, Sandman, and Hobgoblin are all the vil villains, none of them get their time to shine. Yeah. Um, and they just don't do great. Um, whereas, like, actually getting to build up Venom as an antagonist, it would be really cool. And then you can have Venom become an anti-hero because we've already built mm -hmm. up what's cool about this character. But like, we never get that. Um, yeah. And so I don't know. I, I definitely am in the boat here of like, we know we have Craven coming sometime this year. Uh, we got this trailer for Venom 3, so it's still happening. Um, and I'm very curious to what this is going to mean for the Sony verse. Like after these movies. Cause yeah. uh, like, are we going to finally see Sony sell the rights back to like, Marvel back to Marvel studios? Or are we going to like, cause they just <laughs> do so terribly that they're like, this isn't yeah. worth the investment. Yeah. Even though Madam Web was literally a cash grab to maintain the copyright. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do wonder there, I, I've said this before. And so, and this ties in with our last thing of, I would not be shocked to find out that, the Madam Web script is one of the things that initiated the writer's strike. Oh, of, it's it's absolutely like, been talked about within my circles that if not the entire thing, but at least parts of that script for that yeah. movie specifically were just straight up AI written. Yeah. Because no logical, you know, writer, script writer would have output that entire thing and had it, you know, allowed it to be greenlit yeah. like <laughs> yeah. uh yeah so like, i i just i, I don't know <laughs> i just I, I i feel again i feel like that had to have been an instigation of like yeah. you know what yeah. we're done I, walk yeah, away would not be surprised uh, either if it was because it's been talked about and pointed yeah. to as an example of like 
you know, definitely parts of that project were absolutely AI written. Yeah. And yeah, I don't, I, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I, it, I've said this before. It boggles me that the spider verse movies are two of the best superhero movies ever made. Like, like no asterisks, no caveats. They are two of the best superhero movies ever made. Are they one and two? Probably not. But like, they're probably like top 10 superhero movies ever. Um, And then like, what is going on with the rest of the Sony verse? Um, And I mean, I would love for Craven to like knock it out of the park and for it just to be like, wait, is this one really good? But, like, I don't know. And then, like I said, I'm hopeful for this, that, like, with this being the last dance and them taking back that cheeky title, we'll get the announcement that, like, hey, here is X, Y, Z that's going to happen. Like, even if it is actually, like, some sort of sharing thing, kind of like what they do with the character of Spider-Man right now. Yeah. Where, like, hey, we're going to continue making our Sony-verse but full access, like Marvel's going to have full access to Spider-Man characters. We're going to work out negotiations on the characters that we want for our movies versus just the ones yeah. that we have. Stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, we, we can say Peter Parker in our movies now um, and stuff like that. I think like bring back Andrew Garfield as like an older Spider-Man. Like, yeah. Um, I oh, no. I would I would just hope that they, we can actually see them make some changes there to to like better serve both the Sony verse and the MCU if they are going to both keep going. Or yeah. let's just get it all back in the MCU. <laughs> like Yeah. I mean, I'm even mildly surprised that Sony hasn't done something like that sooner with the rest of its IPs given that Marvel as a whole has been such a huge competitor for, Mm. you know, long enough of a time, like, and, and not even so much, I mean, yes, a competitor, but a competitor that's done considerably better with the characters and those sort of franchises that are even remotely associated, um, because it's been a conversation for long enough of, Marvel Studio versus Sony Studio. The mm-hmm. fans are very aware of, you know, how well Marvel has handled those story arcs over the years versus how not so well in general Sony has handled them mm-hmm. and are much more likely to go see Marvel stuff than Sony stuff. Yeah. And you even have the stuff of like whoever it is that is it Dakota Johnson? that plays yeah. Madam Web of her like yeah. thinking she was in the MCU. Yeah. And then <laughs> like finding out she wasn't. Um which man, what a gut wrenching thing yeah. to learn. Um like we had something similar with like the Avatar T V series yes. where one of the yeah. actors thought he got a role in James Cameron's Avatar. Yeah. I thought I was gonna be a big blue person. You're like, oh man, uh, that's a difference. Uh um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Again, like I just like looked it up. Apparently there's like six or seven announced Sony verse projects. Oh boy. Like, um, just scrap them now. Yeah. yeah. And there's a, there's a, don't even scrap them. Just give them to Marvel. Yes, exactly. Um, there's an unspecified, um, Oh, I forgot venom. Like, so venoms comes out in October and then, Craven comes out in December. So like we're getting those two movies this year. I thought Venom was early next year, but I was wrong there. Yeah. Um and then in development we have the Sinister 6. That could be cool if we'd built up the villains ahead of time and you know, they could fight Spider-Man. They're actual yeah. like the actual hero yeah. that they're the antagonists of. Yeah. Um, um we have Nightwatch, Jackpot, two untitled films. Um, one by Robert Orkey and the other by Olivia Wilde, um, El Muerto, a hypno hustler film, um, 
where Donald Glover will star and produce. Um, and then there is, it just called, it says other projects. And then there is a um, noir series that was recently announced that will star um, Nicolas Cage. And then there is a Silk Spider Society as well as Silver in Black in the works. Uh, oh, no, never mind. That one was canceled. Uh, oh, no, it was, was going to be a film that was canceled and it's being redeveloped into a television series. Interesting. So, um, so that's a lot of projects. And yep. like, I don't necessarily think that like Sony making these movies is bad. I just wish that they would. It, it feels like they're trying to do work better. It. Yeah, I wish that they would do better. You know, that's like, <laughs> ba, 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 ba. Uh, but like to I put it they, plainly, yeah. do better. Yeah, I just, I, yeah, I just wish that they could be more intentional with what they want to do. Yeah, like, and again, I think like and how they go about it. Exactly, I think at the core that is like, if we're going to do these, we need Spider Man, even if it's not like a name like a face person for Spider-Man. Like we need the ability to have Spider-Man that these characters yep. can interact with. Yep. We need, um, cause we that's need literally the... the reason they exist. <laughs> exactly. Um, we need that side of things. Um, had Madam Webb done well, like there was a side of it that like sure seemed like they were trying to set up a spider, like a live action spider verse. Yeah. Um, with Madam Webb, who was a major part of spider verse. Mm -hmm. um, and her recruitment of spider heroes from across the web of life and destiny, whatever the that Nick Fury of yeah. spider men and women all across Ex the world. Exactly. And that kind of would let them do a cool team up type stuff. Now, granted yeah. we are literally getting that in the spider verse movies. So I don't know if we also need that in live action, but here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Um, Here we are. But um, I guess with that, um, listeners, leave a comment. What Sony property are you excited for? Are there any of these that you have hopes for? Um, and other than, you know, the Spider-Verse movies, um, let us know what you think um, as we segue into our post show for today. Um do want to say at the top of the show, Emma did mention book club. Um, I will hopefully have that posted um, on X-Men last stay or life death. Um, hopefully have that posted by the time this episode is up. If you are watching on YouTube, so you can go and find that in the book club playlist. Um, that book is also our 10th book club or a 10th book club. It's our 40th total book club. Um, which means it is time for us to do another book club tier list. So we are working um, with Shanine to find a good time for us to get together and do that. Um, and so hopefully we'll have that soon um, as well. And then uh, end of the month, we will uh, have our book club on the adventures of Amina El Serafi by S.A. Um, Chakraborty. Um, and that's going to be on June 27th. And so it's a really cool, like, summary adventure book, um, if I remember in the description from that one. And so I'm excited for us to try that out or try that out, to read that one um, and kind of see um, what it's going to be. As always, Janine brought a handful of recommendations, and that was the one that we were all like, this one sounds really cool. And so... yeah. We're very excited for that one. More information can, of course, be found in the Discord. But, um, speaking of Discord, um, you can find us on our social media as OneGeek411. Join that Discord. Shoot us an email at 1stgeek411 at gmail.com. Check out our Redbubble store, watch live on Twitch, and find the videos over on YouTube where you can like, comment, and subscribe. Then you can find us on our personal social media. Mine is Himar Whittle. Mine is I am not prepared with an eye in the prepared. And it's been a great week. Plant some plants. Play some games.